would like to formally bring on our guest, Gabriella Francis, who is the CEO of Squeg. As you know, we love questions here at Women's Health Tech Wednesday. So if you have any for Gabby, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen or the chat, and I will make sure that we uh, spend some time to get to it. So with that, wanted to welcome Gabby. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an amazing opportunity to get to uh, speak with like-minded individuals. So really, really happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, maybe if we could kind of kick things off, would love if you can introduce yourself and maybe just give us a, a quick background on, um, you know, your journey that has led you to Squig. All right. <laughs> uh, so my name is Gabriella Francis. You can call me Gabby. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm an athletic trainer. I'm also a certified and licensed occupational therapist uh, in the state of New York where I practice. And I'm also the CEO of Squig. Um, so I'd love to give a little bit of background about kind of my journey and how I got here. Um, so I think we'll start with, I did my undergrad at University of Delaware, where I completed their athletic training program. And that's really where I started to get involved with uh, Special Olympics and so many different adaptive equipment for sports. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to also uh, pick up a disability studies minor and really get involved uh, with the community at the school and, and surrounding area. Um, I have some wonderful memories from A. I. DuPont Children's Hospital and working with a couple of their volunteer programs, their adaptive swim programs and bocce ball programs and you name it. Um, but essentially loving, you know, kind of that space and seeing how technology could really impact um, someone's ability to be able to perform some sports that they really wanna, you know, get involved with. So. That was my athletic training background. I fell in love with OT through the work uh, with the school, or sorry, with the hospital, AO DuPont Hospital. And from there, I, uh, I got my master's in occupational therapy from NYU. And I decided that I also wanted to do my post-professional doctorate uh, for OT with a clinical competence area of expanding the OT's role for designing and developing assistive technology at NYU as well. Uh, so that, I could dive a little bit deeper into why I chose that path. Um, NYU has an amazing uh, program, the Ability Project, and with that, they have uh, a course that's offered for OT students in mm -hmm. which they bring together students from, uh, like I said, OT students and engineering students and to work on a project. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where I fell in love with user-centered design and this design process. And I saw the value that OTs can really bring uh, to making and mm -hmm. to help integrate this healthcare and technology space. Um, so I got involved with a startup called Level the Curve there. Mm -hmm. And they're special because um, they are individuals, the founders with spinal cord injuries, and they make products for people with spinal cord injuries. That's amazing. So, yeah, they're amazing. I'm so happy to still, you know, get to work with them. Um, but I really have them to thank for introducing me to this startup space mm -hmm. and also just uh, truly valuing the user's voice in yeah. the design process. Um, so fast forward a little bit. I graduate. I'm still working with Level the Curve. Uh, you know, I, I pass my boards. I'm an OT. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I start working uh, with NYU Langone uh, mm -hmm. part time. and. Then I get involved with Squig, and it was through a mutual connection. Um, mm -hmm. And I sat down with the founder, and what hooked me automatically was his. He kind of had that same mindset, right? Like he had a product mm -hmm. that was for you know general health and wellness, increasing grip strength for racket sport, which I can appreciate as from the athletic training standpoint, um, but he wanted to make the jump into the health tech space. Ah. So he said, okay, I'm going, if I'm going to build this product, because we're getting traction organically from mm -hmm. OTs that want to use this product, mm -hmm. um, let's do it right. So let's have users who are going to be the OTs get on board and integrate to help lead this, you know, kind of vision for mm -hmm. what the product can be and how we can serve those very specific needs. Um, so I started out with Squeg as just, or not, I shouldn't say just, because it's still a very valuable role, uh, a subject matter expert. Okay. 
uh, from the, you know, uh, bringing OT expertise. Mm -hmm. And then the team saw the value uh, in, you know, what I was bringing to the table and how I was integrating all of these different aspects, again, from a user-centered design focus, right? right? Um, So I was recently appointed CEO. So now I get to fully lead and and drive, um, you know, this merge between healthcare and technology uh, for this product. And then also on a grander scale, you know, with advocacy as well. I love to advocate for my profession. I'll talk about OT a lot. <laughs> love it. <laughs> but uh, I think it's really cool to, you know, go off of user-centered design and then also to have a very diverse team. I think those Absolutely. are kind of one of the, or sorry, two of the most yeah. important things. So kind of a lengthy background, sorry, That's but uh, I think it, it tells the story nicely. Um, and I'm excited and passionate, you know, about, breaking down traditional power constructs and empowering others to be the expert of their own, you know, lived experiences. And that, that comes along with user-centered design. Um, So that's incredible. And I definitely want to pick your brain a little bit more about that as well. Kind of the transition (laughs) that you've made um, in your career to now CEO. Um, But I just love what you were talking about, about the importance of, I think, co-creation when it comes to the experts and, and really knowing that as end users, as you were saying, folks that have this lived experience, they have so much power and perspective to bring to the table. So um, I love that you, you've you highlighted that and you, you're actually able to live it, which is amazing. I uh, wanted to ask you a little bit more about, about Swag and about the product. Would love if you can share kind of what it does, um, a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I actually have mine here. Oh, I love <laughs> I it. Always, I always keep it with me. Um, but no, at Squag, we create smart solutions that assess and monitor um, biomarkers of not only aging, but musculoskeletal function, neurological function, uh, and help deliver remote care for upper extremity uh, conditions with uh, engaging, gamified, user-friendly, hopefully, <laughs> an AI integrated platform. Uh, so we have the device itself. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a Bluetooth. We have FDA clearance. It's a medical device. Uh, com- comes with a companion application, which you can download on a smartphone or tablet. Okay. And that is kind of the interface that allows for the assessment of grip strength uh, mm-hmm. to monitor performance over time, offers fun, engaging games. Uh, so we really kind of tap into the gamification of rehab process. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, hopefully to not only track longitudinally over time, but then also improve grip strength, endurance, coordination, so on on and so forth. Um, So yeah, like I I mentioned a little bit before, the cool thing about having uh, not only myself who's an OT, right, to lead the Mm -hmm. kind of product vision, but we also have another uh, subject matter expert who is also a PM. She has, she's amazing. Her name is Winnie. Uh, She is not only an occupational therapist and a hand therapist, uh, CHD, but she's also, she also has her MBA. So she's very well, well versed. (laughs) Um, You know, having the two of us getting to work together, we're able to, you know, kind of create products by OTs for OTs. Um, So it kind of brings back what I was saying before. Uh, But we're able to incorporate, you know, some of the standards, like the standards for dynamometry, the ASHT guidelines uh, for maximal grip strength. And we kind of take, you know, that little voice that (laughs) comes out when we're talking to our clients and are Mm -hmm. able to make screens and build that into the actual UX UI and the flow uh, to be able to support remote care. So, um, yeah, so that's really exciting. And then kind of looking to the future, uh, we're building a, what we call Squeg Pro, and that will be our fully clinician facing application. Uh, So it will allow um, clinics and then also the therapist to be able to create multiple accounts Mm -hmm. and to manage uh, those accounts in one place. Um, so that will be able to support, you know, it will give like session summaries. You can assign home exercise programs. Um, you can, uh, support insurance reimbursement for RTM. If you're in that space, like outpatient space. Right. Um, but yeah, so pretty cool. Lots of cool things on the horizon. I Um, love that. And I think that is, I mean, I'm just thinking about, I know we'll definitely dive into this as well, but just thinking about what this can do from like an access perspective, right? Like yes. just, there's so many um, really amazing things that can be done with technology like this that is really 
um, you know, looks like very intentionally designed and developed. So I think that is um, absolutely incredible and wanted to ask you, I think about, it seems like you have such um, a vision for the company. Would love if you could share a little bit more about, you know, when you think about Squeg, what are kind of the core values? What is like the, the main impact that you are really looking to make in this space? Yeah, that is a wonderful question. That's the big question, right? Like, <laughs> what, what is the vision? Um, so I think that, you know, zooming out from just, uh, you know, grip strength, mm -hmm. building a connected ecosystem to be able to support the continuum of care across, like, like mm -hmm. across the continuum of care. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a device where it's to be used in clinic and then used as a home exercise program. And then once, you know, someone's done with their course of care, put it aside. We're right. more so thinking long-term. So it's not only for acute, and but it's also for, you know, chronic mm -hmm. and longitudinally over time. Right. So if someone's able to have that data mm -hmm. pre-injury, they also know exactly what to, what their goal is to be uh, able to get back to. Right. Uh, and then because grip strength is a biomarker of aging, Mm -hmm. It also, if you have that data longitudinally, it can also give providers insights mm -hmm. into if there is a decline, when might be a good time for that individual to get, inter you know, to seek intervention, right. um, to be able to prevent some things down the line. So it's mm -hmm. like a trigger for maybe they need to make some changes or get some care and, and, and have that be that case. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different use cases, um, but I think overall on a zoomed out level, it would be good to have one way, like I said, that connected ecosystem right. where users can play games, have fun, you know, engage with the product on their end, but then that very valuable objective data mm -hmm. can be, you know, assessed and monitored yeah. by the clinician. And then to that. really support that, yeah, that system. That's that's our overall goal. That's amazing. And I really like that you are kind of seeking to have something that's very proactive, it seems like, where, um, you know, kind of as a consumer, as a patient, knowing that you kind of have that safety net um, and the interventions are kind of happy, happening at, in a very timely manner. So I think that is um, really great that you're kind of building that in as well. Um, wanted, I just, I'm so curious because I think when yeah. we think about like product development, I think that's just so interesting to me. Um, how did kind of the beginning of like the product design of the device look like compared to now? Was there any difference or was it kind of, did you kind of have a vision for what you wanted it to look and feel like, and then have just executed on that? Yeah. Yeah. So this, the product that's out currently, we call Squeg version 1.0. <laughs> Uh, we've learned many things along the way and, and that's, you know, I think the customer obsession is a good thing and something yes. that we value. Um, cause like I said, we're always, you know, seeking feedback and then not mm -hmm. only just seeking the feedback, but then actually making tangible, like tangible steps to right. be able to support that feedback. Um, so through some of the, you know, research and feedback that we've gotten, we're actually increasing the size of the device. Um, oh, okay. for the adult population. Yeah. For it's going to be 20% larger. Mm -hmm. Um, and the standard for dynamometry or grip strength measurement right now is the JMAR device. And mm -hmm. of that, the second handle position, essentially we're taking that circumference, uh, size around and replicating it in the device. So there's oh, more nice. consistency with the gold standard. Right. And then we're also using universal design principles, um, to be able to take those measurements mm -hmm. of you know, um, the hand measurements and be able to fit 90% of hands for the U.S. That's population. Amazing. So we're really trying to, you know, take some steps to uh, better the product um, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Uh, that, again, is for the adult population. Pediatrics is a different use case. Uh, so right. the smaller one is actually, you know, better for them. Um, but we're actually making, there's new products in our, our pipeline as well to be able to support pinch uh, measurements. So it'll be like in a, a plugin uh -huh. uh, to the actual device. And then, yeah, we'll be able to do lateral pinch, three jaw chuck and tip to tip prehension. And that also just gives, you know, therapists and practitioners uh, a more well-rounded um, 
view with the data that we're able to collect mm. with those assessments then as well. That's so interesting. Uh, and the new device will also be able to do range of motion. So that's, oh. uh, yeah, for, for the joints of the upper extremity. So we're really trying to build, um, right now it's, it's very pieced, uh, mm. what assessment tools you use for which assessments. Right. Um, but we're, we're thinking more grander scale uh, and being able to collect different data points for one, you know, uh, cohesive uh, evaluation yeah. and to be able to support that remotely, which is the yes. key. Yeah, that's, that's the key part. Yeah. And I love that you're really thinking comprehensively. And I think for me, I'm just getting an education um, just from all of the different components. I didn't realize when you were talking about the pin strength and some of these other things, how um, all of that really kind of ties in to paint this picture and, and provide that assessment. So um, yeah, it's, I was like, wow, I did not even know that, but that's amazing. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I wanted to ask you a little bit. I think, you know, everything that you're describing really speaks to this kind of continuum of care as you're adding more and more assessments and tools. Um, you know, when you think about SQUAG and kind of what you're envisioning for the continuum of care, what does that kind of look like? Do you kind of see, um, you know, this product kind of being used in the primary care setting and then kind of expanding on? I um, would love if you can share a little bit more about kind of the integration component and, you know, the the power of being able to have a device like this kind of throughout um, a journey. Yeah, uh, the continuum of care is a big, a big piece of it, right? Um, so we touched a little bit on it previously, um, but the, the thought process, right, is to have one device that's smart, so it has all your data within it, and then mm. that system can then be accessed by whoever the user shares that data with, right? Obviously, HIPAA compliance is, uh, is a whole thing. Um, but if we can create a, an ecosystem in which uh, different providers have access to this data, mm -hmm. it's only going to help them in understanding, you know, the, the full vision. And, and we are even thinking, you know, outside of um, physical assessments, like musculoskeletal assessments, like I had mentioned, like grip and pinch, but mm -hmm. also to expand that out to more meaningful, like functional assessments as well. Oh, uh, wow. And having you know, the OT in me is very functional. So a grip strength and, and pinch from a biomechanical frame of reference do have their role. Um, but I think that, you know, if we can, anything that we can do to help build a more holistic picture okay. of truly what's going on is really going to be invaluable. That's um, amazing. And I love that you're kind of able to really kind of hone in on like the OT side in you, as well as kind of the, the CEO side in you to really think about what the future of something like this could look like. Um, and I think it's an incredible vision. And I think on that note, I really would love if you can just kind of share your journey to CEO. I mean, was this something that you kind of saw yourself doing? Was this kind of a path for you? Um, yeah, I just would love if you can walk us through, through kind of how that happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's start all the way back in first grade <laughs> when uh, when my first grade teacher called me the what if girl because I just was so visionary and dissatisfied with like, oh, the way that, that things were that I always had questions and I was always looking to improve and be innovative. But no, um, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> starting off, uh, this this was not, you know, the, the where I thought my career would take me. Mm. Um, but as I became integrated into the team and I saw the value um, mm -hmm. that being my knowledge from the space, the OT space mm -hmm. would bring to the development of technologies that are going to be used by OTs and by the people that we serve. I saw that there was a great opportunity for me to be able to build things mm -hmm. or have a say in you know the obviously the team is is huge right <laughs> i don't build anything by myself it's a it's a team approach but essentially having that background allows me to take into consideration what we're building why we're building who we're building it for um and i think that that was valued by the team Absolutely. and they saw the direct impact um by some of the use cases uh, some of the testimonials that came in for people and, and how they were using the device and what it meant to them and the impact that it was able to have uh, really kind of solidified that this device that 
initially was just for grip strength, like I said, for general health and wellness could really have an impact in someone's life. So it's an honor to be able to help build to better support that. So it can be used by more and more people in this space. That's um, incredible. So yeah, I never really saw myself in this position, but I think that I, you know, as, as kind of a plug for OTs, we have this great skill set that is applicable in so many different ways. Um, and I, so, yeah. no, I think that's, I think that that journey and kind of, you had mentioned this a little bit earlier about, you know, the power of honing in on an expertise and having that um, experience, that lived experience that you can bring to the table. Would love if you could share, you know, do, for, you know, maybe folks that are in the audience that, um, have kind of honed in on that expertise and are really looking to expand their role, whatever that means for them. Do you have any, you know, words of wisdom, any advice um, when it comes to what that could look like? Yeah, I think advocate for yourself, advocate for your background, know your worth and and truly, um, you know, speak that and be proud of whatever, everyone has their own superpowers. I love to mm -hmm. say it, right? Like, absolutely. and, and that's the biggest thing about having a diverse team is that so many people bring their own area of expertise, and then you're able to collaborate together, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a dynamic way. So I think that um, if you can fully understand what you can bring to the table and express that to your team, people are going to see value in it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I would also say network, right? Like uh, talk to other like-minded individuals, understand what they're doing and, and their perspective and, you know, get involved. Um, I'm active on LinkedIn. I'm active on different networking social sites. Uh, I love to just, you know, talk to people, understand their background, yeah. understand what their role is and, and what their values are and, and collaborate. I, I always think like many minds working together are always better than just one. So I, I'm right, always there, like involving other people and, and uh, you know, just really networking. So that's amazing. And I love that. What a great like mantra. Um, kind of on that note, I know you had just spoken to really the power of networking. Um, do you kind of have any like tips and tricks for maybe folks that are you know, really interested in kind of branching out and kind of building that community for themselves. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, having your LinkedIn is great. Mm -hmm. Coming to events like this is phenomenal. Going to in-person events is even better. Yes, um, I think also it, it's a very general question, but I think if you find other individuals who are in your line of work, who are looking mm -hmm. to you know, expand into some of these other roles that you're also interested in, like forming relationships with those individuals on a personal level can be great. Uh, find mentors who have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that just um, finding other people who share the same values as you uh, is so powerful. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. <laughs> no, 100%. I think that's so true because I feel like it, I think sometimes when you think about just the word like networking, that can seem a little bit daunting. Um, but I think I like that you were just kind of breaking it down to it's just really about connections, kind of building relationships and, and really just having that um, shared community. So I think at the, at, you know, when you kind of strip out all of that, that's really what it is. It's just about being able to make a connection. And of course, events like this, LinkedIn, there's so many um, awesome opportunities for that. Yeah, yeah. And even like... Um... I got the chance to present at AOTA, which is our national conference and um, guest lectures and things like that. So it, it's just amazing to be able to have, like put yourself in those positions where you can have outreach, right? Absolutely. Um, so yeah. That's incredible. We actually have some great questions from the audience. I wanna make sure that we um, kind of have some time to get to it. Uh, so one of our participants had asked, I see on your website that you had a successful Kickstarter. Have you raised since then? So we actually have not had, um, that we have $400,000, but not in diluted uh, revenue. Mm. Uh, We're about to open up um, a, a round of funding. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see what that process <laughs> is like and, and learn so much <laughs> from mm. that, from that journey. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm very excited to help this company grow to see its full potential as well. So yeah, that, that's a great mm -hmm. question. 
We have another one from the audience that says, does SQUAG incorporate exercises for people with high blood pressure? Yeah, um, so there is there was a study that found that doing isometric exercises, expert, um, there's certain parameters to it, um, can actually help with blood pressure and Ooh. cardiovascular. So we we took that article and the findings from that research and incorporated it into an exercise um, that can help uh, with those per the findings of that article. So yeah, so we, we built out um, uh, an activity for that as well. That's amazing. That's incredible. We have another one from the audience that says, you mentioned that you are using AI for the product. What is the AI being used or how is that being used? Yeah, so we have smart games. Uh, so it takes, oh. the, it takes the most recent maximal grip strength measurement. And then within the games as a part of the challenges, um, we'll automatically uh, you know, integrate what the percent of that max should be for the different levels. And then the, the smart piece to that also is as the user goes through gameplay, um, there's algorithms in place to be able to identify um, successes versus failures and to be able to find, you know, you know, adjust the level of difficulty for whatever game that is in order to help the user find their just right challenge. And that ties directly back to, uh, that term is something that OTs love, so I'm very, I use it very proudly. <laughs> Uh, the just right challenge, but that can help with things like entering a flow state. Uh, it can also help with engagement and motivation and compliance. No one wants to play a game where they're constantly losing. <laughs> so um, th those are some of the pieces uh, that are some of the things that we're using AI for currently, and we're looking to expand it even more um, throughout our platform. That is amazing. Um, I just realized that we are at time. That is crazy. Uh, we definitely need to do a part two, kind of maybe once you've launched the pro and some of the other things that you're working on. I think it's the, the work that you're doing and the vision that you have is so incredible. So uh, I think all, we're all very excited to see how Squad kind of continues to grow and expand. And thank you so much, Gabby, for being here today and kind of sharing your, your vision with us. Oh, thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure.